Hello world, an update on my project to redesign my Homebrew 6502 computer to run a modified version of the Apple II Ultima 4 with perfect graphics and sound, and then to beat the game on the computer that I built. In preparation, I've rebuilt the computer on breadboards. This was actually not that hard since I already have the schematic. The hardest part was deciding to do it. To achieve my goal, I have to make some design changes, and I realized that this is the simplest way to do that. I did solve some key problems that I'd like to share with you. The biggest problem is that I'm trying to take a VGA signal and retrofit it to an Apple II video format. I previously made my homebrew read video data from the same region and the same format as the Apple II. This was the simplest way to port LoadRunner to my machine. I figured that rather than rewrite the graphics routines in LoadRunner, I could match the hardware more closely and that that might make future ports easier. This project is a continuation of that approach. Woz famously hacked the NTSC signal in the Apple II to produce color. I have to use logic to emulate the Apple II artifact behavior with a VGA signal. The biggest obstacle to this is timing. The Apple II high-res graphics format is one bit per pixel, but only seven pixels per byte. The eighth bit is a timing bit that shifts the color palette. In my previous build, I took the VGA signal and divided it down to 1 16th of the VGA clock. Like the Apple II, I share the RAM between CPU and video circuitry using time division multiplexing. That just means that the CPU gets the RAM when the CPU clock is high, and video gets it when the clock is low. The video circuitry reads memory in every CPU clock cycle and loads it into a shift register. That register is clocked at around 12 MHz and shifts out a pixel about 12 million times a second. This allows the circuitry to output a byte of RAM as 8 pixels and achieve 320 horizontal resolution. The solution in my previous build was to make the 8th and 7th pixels the same. Instead of showing the 8th pixel as it is, just show the 7th pixel a second time. Uh, otherwise, the signal will show jail bars or show black bars every eighth pixel. Uh, this makes it usable, but every eighth pixel is twice as wide. It's an obvious artifact and not ideal. What I really need is an 11.014 megahertz clock signal so that for each memory read, the shift register can output seven pixels instead of eight. After a conversation with ChatGPT, I discovered the PLL, phased lock loop. Lots of good videos on PLLs on YouTube, so I won't bother explaining it in detail here. The gist of it though is this. It's an analog circuit that includes a voltage controlled oscillator, a phase comparison, a feedback loop. Basically, you give it an input signal, in my case, the 1.57 megahertz clock signal. The output of the phase comparison can be fed back into the voltage controlled oscillator. The phase comparator compares the input frequency with the frequency from the VCO. The feedback loop causes these frequencies to match. Cool. What's really cool though is that you can put a clock divider on the signal coming out of the phase comparator and it will divide the signal. For example, if you divide the signal in half and then plug it back into the VCO, the VCO will drive the signal to be twice as fast. The phase comparator produces a voltage proportional to the difference between the signals. This means I can divide the output of the phase comparator by seven and this chip will produce a synchronized clock signal that is seven times the input frequency. This is exactly what I need. Okay, so obviously I got it working. The next part is emulating the Apple II color artifacting. I'm using a 22V10C PLD to implement the logic here. It's just too convenient. I've uploaded schematics, PLD files for the 22V10 and helper programs for generating the ROMs for the video signals, the video addressing and the DOS fonts. I'll put a link in the description. So I basically implemented the design that I cooked up from the first video in Logisim in the 22V10 and it basically works. I'm sure I'll tweak the resistor values coming off the color pins to get the palette as close as possible. So I'm happy to report that I've accomplished the hardest part of phase one. I also made some progress on phase three by getting the SD card working with the level shifters on the breadboard. The next hardest problem are matching the device region, the soft switches, the RAM and ROM banking. I've been looking at the Ultima 4 code and it makes extensive use of the RAM banking. So I think this will be next. Here I am tweaking the potentiometers to adjust the resistance values in the PLL circuit. The potentiometers are much easier than the math required to find the precise resistance values. This is now the best version of my computer that I've ever built and I'm super happy. Thanks for watching.